Hi guys, here I am. So we've been getting a lot of questions about um, getting your dog started on DISC. Um, we often call it the, uh, many students will ask for Frisbee, but that trade that term is trademark. So for those purposes, I don't wanna get sued, so I'm not gonna use the F word, but we can use the word DISC. Um, couple things to keep in mind, I competed back in the early 2000s, um, and then my dog developed a heart issue, so I wasn't able to continue competing. But I just, I still do, I still do, I'm sorry, I have not had my second cup of coffee yet. I still do teach um, beginner disc dogs classes in Danvers twice a year, usually in January and June. Um, but the thing that we usually go over is first, does your dog like it? I'll get students that take the class and then it turns out that their dog, yeah, they kind of like tooling around with it, but they don't love it. And I'm gonna bring my dog Captain out here to demonstrate exactly what that looks like. Um, but then what we're going to do, because Captain's not into it, and I don't have any discs anymore, because my dog, Sadie, has been gone for years now, so I don't have a disc dog, so I've had no reason to keep discs here. And with quarantine, I haven't been able to get up to the training center to get my discs, um, so I don't have any of the appropriate tools. But what I can do is start to teach you about drive. I can teach you some basics, and then I'm going to pass it over to my assistant, Nick. Um, he runs On Point Krav Maga. And he's a wonderful assistant. He's a great teacher. And he has a dog, Balana, who you've seen in some of the earlier videos. Um, he was helping me film earlier at the very beginning of quarantine. And his dog is amazing. And so is Nick. And Nick is learning to be a teacher. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for Nick to start teaching um, and get getting some training hours under his belt, getting some... Um, start practicing teaching other people the sport of disc for fun, not necessarily for competition, and what that would look like. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for him. It'd be great for me to be able to recommend people to someone that I adore and trust. Um, and hopefully um, we can get you guys started on disc if you guys are still stuck in quarantine or you're curious. Um, again, like my, my background was years and years and years ago, so a lot of things have changed. But the dynamics of how you start in disc dogs has not. Um, first, your dog has to like it. <laughs> That's important. Um, and Captain, my dog Captain, who you've seen in most of these videos since quarantine started, he's a hound, and that doesn't necessarily mean they won't like disc. One of my um, favorite disc dog students was a Boston Terrier. Um, I used to um, use her for demonstrations when my dog was too old to do it. So um, it doesn't matter the breed. It doesn't matter the size. It just matters like if the dog is driven for it. Um, the way you're going to start is finding an appropriate disc. Now, this is what I have. This is a rough wear disc right now. Um, I got this one specifically because Captain is reinforced by tugging and pulling. Um, if you are looking at, um, at the sport of disc, there are several pieces of it. There's the anticipation, where I line up and the dog is ready to go. There's the chase, there's the grab, there's the bring it back for the next throw. Um, which part of that is the reinforcing part for your dog? And that's going to depend on your dog, not me telling you what you think that is going to be reinforcing to all dogs. It goes back to what Sue Sternberg always says, it's the individual dog. Um, so in Captain's case, it's tug. And one of the things that we have to go over when we're doing just dogs is teaching a reliable take it and drop it. So when I work with Captain, he is reinforced for dropping the disc with a game of tug. So when I was starting to work him on building a little bit of drive so I could get maybe a 30 second routine out of him, what I would see from him is go, go, go. And then every third or fourth, I would play a game of tug with him and then do some tricks. He'd go get the disc, bring it back and then tug, tug, tug. So for him, it was tug. For Sadie, it was the chase and the anticipation of getting the next one. She was a border collie, so it was like all about bring, keeping things together. <laughs> and for her, all those discs were her sheep and they needed to stay together. Um, so with that, I'm going to first, um, I'm going to pause it here. I'm gonna put some uh, links down here for you. Skyhounds with a Z, because it was the 90s and everything started, ended with a Z. Uh, Hyperflight. Um, and uh, USDDN are three organizations and groups and places where you can either get discs, get more, uh, to get kind of more into the nitty gritty of what disc should I get and all that fun stuff. But I'm going to pause here and then we're going to take a quick break and I'm going to talk about uh, what kind of disc to get and how to get your dog started on rollers. 
Okay, so the discs that you wanna get, you wanna start looking at um, not using a human disc. If you're using a human Frisbee or one for um, uh, disc golf or uh, ultimate Frisbee, that's the sport I was thinking of. I think disc golf has metal, so definitely don't use that. But the, uh, the ultimate disc discs, if you look, usually I demonstrate this for my students, but again, all my discs are up in uh, at the training facility. The human disc is huge and it's really heavy and it's got a deep, a deep lip on it, whereas the disc dog discs are much smaller. The other thing to keep in mind, the discs that are intended for this sport absorb the bite. So if you look at a disc that has been bitten by a dog who's grabbing it out of the air, you don't want it to shatter. So stay away from the big box store, $2 discs or under, the, or the discs that your kid might've gotten at a fair or festival. Those things shatter. I've seen dogs have to get stitches in their gum line and on their tongues because that plastic is hard and it's not intended to absorb the bite. If you are looking at um, a disc dog disc, um, again, Skyhounds or Hyperflight are the first two places that you wanna look. That is a plastic that is designed to absorb that dog's bite. So it'll puncture and the edges will of course get um, ripped up and shredded a bit. So you can grind that down with some sandpaper. They are also top drawer dishwasher safe. So you can clean them, which is awesome. Um, Cause those can get really nasty. Um, they also have uh, more intense discs like Jaws, J-A-W-Z. Again, 90s, early 2000s, Zs and everything. Um, but the Jaws disc is great for throwing, catching for those more sharky dogs, the Malligators, the, the dogs that have a harder bite. But they are not intended for the dog who has not yet learned to bring the disc back. If you have a dog that's still running out into a field and is chewing on a disc, that's not, don't spend $16 on one Jaws disc if your dog can't bring the disc back yet because they will still be able to chew through and break that disc. Um, and again, if you're just doing this for fun, Roughwear has some great ones. Um, the uh, Kai, I think Kaijin has a couple, which is great. This one, Kong has one that's floppy and it's made out of Kong material. But the problem with those is that they're very floppy and they're hard. It's hard to get a good straight arc on them. They, they flop and they're unpredictable where they go. But if you're just doing it for drive and trying to get your dog interested and your dog might be afraid of the plastic, the Kong discs are totally fine if you're just trying to build drive or tooling around in the backyard. Now, a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, how are you holding the disc? So imagine this has like a little lip, it's just, which it does. So most people will hold the disc like this, fingers under and one on the side. Um, when I asked my husband about this, he goes, I don't do that. And then he picked up the disc and did exactly this. Um, but this is how we're usually shown in school how to hold a Frisbee or a disc. Um, Instead, I'm gonna tuck all four fingers under and I'm going to use my thumb as my target, as my aiming um, where I want this disc to go. I also take into consideration the wind. Um, so that's also going to affect the throw. I don't have a ton of space here and I haven't done any target practice in a really long time. But if you have chalk at your house, you can actually make targets um, like on a wall, like I've got this over here. So I could technically just draw like big targets there and practice hitting it. Much of this dog's is doing a lot of work by yourself without your dog and then inviting your dog to play with you. Um, and that I think is the hardest part for my students um, because when they're outside, they want to play with their dog. So if I were to take this, I'm going to see if I can hit a spot. I'm looking at a spot. I'm probably going to miss it because this isn't the right kind of disc. My feet are square. Actually, I didn't do too bad. Um, I was about an inch off, but I want to... I'm using my thumb, it's all in the wrist, but the, the technique that you wanna to use to start getting your dog into disc is what's called a roller. So I'm gonna pause here and we're gonna introduce the roller.